I have stated many times, as did Bill Casing, that I would accept a view of the Apollo sites through a ground-based telescope. I would like to invite NASA and, and all of their supporters to simply take the most powerful telescope on Earth and see if there's a lunar lander there. If there's a lunar lander there, I'll never say another word about an Apollo hoax. If there's no lunar lander there, I'll rest my case. In 2002, Dr. Richard West stated that they would fit the Very Large Telescope, or VLT, with adaptive optics and use it to observe the Apollo relics. Now astronomers hope to kill off the conspiracy theory once and for all by using the Very Large Telescope, the VLT, by far the most powerful telescope in the world, to spot the Apollo lunar landers. Operated by European astronomers in the Chilean Andes, the VLT consists of four mirrors, 27 feet across, linked by optical fibers. It can see a single human hair at a distance of 10 miles. Trained on the moon, such astonishing resolution should enable it to see the base of one or more of the six lunar modules which NASA insists landed on the moon between 1969 and 1972. Any images of the modules would be the first not to have been taken from space by NASA. Dr. Richard West, an astronomer at the VLT, confirmed that his team was aiming to achieve a high-resolution image of one of the Apollo landing sites. The first attempt to spot the spacecraft will be made using only one of the VLT's four telescope mirrors, which are fitted with special adaptive optics to cancel the distorting effects of the Earth's atmosphere. A trial run of the equipment this summer produced the sharpest image of the moon taken from the Earth, showing details 400 feet across from a distance of 238,000 miles. The VLT team hopes to improve on this, with the aim of detecting clear evidence for the presence of the landers. The base of the lunar modules measured about 10 feet across, but would cast a much longer shadow under ideal conditions. Dr. West said that the challenge pushed the optical abilities of one VLT mirror to its limits. If this attempt failed, the team planned to use the power of all four mirrors. They would most probably be sufficiently sharp to show something at the sites, he said. Dr. West insisted, however, that the decision to examine the landing sites was not driven by the conspiracy theory. We do not question the reality of the landings, he said. It is more for instrument testing purposes. In 2006, the then Head of Instrument Science at Anglo-Australian Observatory, Joss Hawthorne, told me they would do the exact same thing using the telescope at Gemini Observatory. You need what's called um, adaptive optics. That's a great idea, you know. I think I'll do that as an experiment. Well, as soon as we get this adaptive optics imager working on Gemini, I'm going to ask if we can actually point it at the moon. Uh, and see if we can find the module for you. How about that for an experiment? <laughs> Wouldn't that be wild? The Gemini Observatory uses two 8.1 meter reflector telescopes, one in Hawaii and one in Chile. The VLT uses a combination of four 8.2 meter reflector telescopes daisy chained together with fiber optics. In April 2010, I spoke with the astronomer in charge of the Anglo-Australian Observatory to ask if there was any luck finding the artifacts. I asked um, one of you guys, Joss Hawthorne, back in 2006. He told me that at Gemini Observatory they were working on these adaptive optics on this one telescope to um, actually try to find the lunar modules that were on the on the moon. Is there any luck finding those yet with the ground-based telescopes? Um, no, not with ground-based telescopes, uh, but you can see them from Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. That lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has sent back beautiful images of all the lunar modules sitting on the moon's surface. That's the place to look. Okay, but there's no luck with the ground-based telescopes not yet. Not yet, no. They're just too far away. They are, you know, 380,000 kilometres to the moon, and these things are a few metres across. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a very, very difficult problem. It's a lot easier to do it from moon orbit, and you can see them, they're on the web. Would these beautiful pictures from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter be the same photos that show the alleged Apollo 15 lander surrounded by no engine exhaust halo? The same photos that depict the Lunar Rover and Surveyor 3 in pitch darkness, even with the sun directly overhead? Or in the case where Surveyor 3 does show, it reveals the craft be aligned differently from the Hasselblad photographs. Those same photos? In any case, 
Even though Doctors Hawthorne and West were confident that the VLT and Gemini would be able to resolve the landers, it seems the propagandists claimed these telescopes were not big enough to see the artifacts, that it would require a telescope the size of a football field to see them. Well, it looks like all is not lost. Recently I have learned that a new telescope is underway in Chile, the Extremely Large Telescope. This beast is 42 metres wide, the largest in the world. It's as wide as a football field. Phil Plate claims that seeing the Apollo artifacts would require an angular resolution of 0 0.002 arc seconds. The ELT will have a resolution between 0 0.001 and 0 0.6 arc seconds, making it perfect to resolve the lunar modules, if they are truly up there. It is said that this telescope will be completed in 2018, the same year that man was supposed to return to the moon. One thing's for sure, the constellation Moonshot may have been canned, but at least we can still set 2018 as the year we gain the ultimate proof. But why should we have to wait until the ELT is built? Seeing man-made objects on the moon is not a question of how big your telescope is, it's simply a question of its resolving capabilities. It requires a resolution of 0 0.002 arc seconds. Why should we wait for the ELT to be completed when the VLT already has that resolution? According to Wikipedia's entry on the VLT, Working together in interferometric mode, the telescopes can achieve an angular resolution of around 1 milliarc second, equivalent to the gap between the headlights of a car as observed from the same distance as between the Earth to the Moon. Their source of this information comes from none other than a 2006 European Southern Observatory press release. With amber on the VLTI, the astronomers were able to see details on the scale of one milliarc second, corresponding to being able to distinguish, from the Earth, the headlights of a car on the Moon. If the VLT has been able to resolve objects as small as the distance between car headlights on the lunar surface, why has it taken them four years to try and find the Apollo relics and come home empty-handed? I will conclude this video with this statement by Bill Casey. If the truth is we went to the moon, I will make a public apology for even suspecting the people involved in such a gigantic hoax and swindle. If the truth is we did not go to the moon, may God have mercy on certain souls.